Hi, welcome to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Get ready to revitalize your mind, body, and soul. We're here to inspire women who are looking to break free from old patterns and ideas to create a life of increased confidence and improved health. Say goodbye to limiting beliefs and hello to new possibilities. So kick back, get ready to have some fun, and let's dive in. We'll uncover tools and insights that can help you build a life that's truly nourishing body and soul. Hi, welcome to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. I'm Tracy. And I'm Victoria. And we're glad that you're here with us. Yes. Um, so this week, we, we went to Monterey Bay. And oh, I, you did? Yes. And it's oh, been a long time since I've been there. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, if you've never been to Monterey, uh, it's put, one on, of my put it on your destination list. Yeah. And if you've never been to Monterey Bay Aquarium, yeah, do that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But anyway, you know, it's touristy and I, yeah. I know better, but, um, we spent a stupid amount of money on saltwater taffy, saltwater, oh, ta- saltwater taffy. Oh. It's not my thing. Uh-huh. My, my Lynn likes it and, um, and kind of likes it, but and so it's like the, I am a snob about it. It's like, I will only ever buy saltwater taffy at some place that is close to salt water. Because it's like, I'm not buying it just anywhere because whatever. A, it's not my thing. But, um, but I mean, it was just, and it's not like we bought a ton of it. Uh huh. But because it was at Monterey and a candy shop right there in Cannery Road. I've been on that can to the candy shop. It was stupid expensive. So I know better than to spend that much on saltwater traffic, which if we had gone probably two or three blocks just away from the ocean, it would probably would have cost us a third of the price. But oh, we were there. It was there, spent too much money on saltwater taffy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. But anyway. Well, that's, well, that's fun though. Well, yeah. It is, you have to do it is like fun. little indulgences like that. So we could have indulged in saltwater taffy from Monterey. It's not, not, not on the actual money work. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So. so I know better. Mine is like, I know better. I'm trying to not eat sugar, I'm trying very hard to not eat sugar for health reasons, because I do not want diabetes and I'm old, like 50 something, early 50s something. Oh, I might as well just say how old I'm 53. And I know my family history that there's to be diabetes. So I was like, I'm committed to not eating sugar. And I know better, but somehow that makes me want it more. Yeah, that's <laughs> And so, because that's it, that's how our bodies are and minds are programmed. That's yeah. Why. So I've gone from like the absolute restriction is not binging effective. just a little bit of sugar, not just a little bit, but binging like a lot of sugar to kind of dialing it back to just like having like somebody made us some homemade bread. These are the kind of things that happen when you live in the middle of the country. Um, someone made us some homemade bread. And so I had to break out the honey, which I don't usually. So I've been, yeah. I didn't binge on it. I just, yeah. there's still a loaf left. I didn't eat it all. I know. So I guess that's better than I know <laughs> better. <laughs> I'm dumb Barbie. I, I, I'm dumb just, Barbie I, today. I just, I just have the, I know better. She has a better than I know better So Yeah. No, I don't know. So anyway, that, that's my yeah. confession. So I know better, better, but I need to, and I need to stop. Yeah. addictive it really is I don't think it's addictive for everybody because some people can be well, like Shh, chong and have like a piece and yeah. that but it's addictive to me well like, I, I, oh I've been there I have yeah. been there so much and really from the difference for me mm-hmm. was really going with leaning hard into the intuitive eating and the no food rules mm-hmm. no food rules like I legitimately now will allow myself to have as much sugar or whatever as I want and really just leaning and, into that yeah yeah because now it's like yeah I can have it or I mean I mean in Monterey Did it take you a long went time to this wonderful oh, okay wonderful restaurant I had this amazing meal oh it was so good mahi mahi mm. it's my it was what so restaurant good. did you go to do you La remember La's, the name Lala's Grill oh, Lala Grill it was so good and they had these desserts that looked amazing and if they were any even a fraction as good as that fish was 
it would have been a dessert to remember forever, mm -hmm. but I didn't get one because I didn't want one. And that, that is not me from, oh, oh my gosh, even five years ago. That was, that was not me. I would not have been able to be in a restaurant like that with the opportunity to have a dessert like that and pass it up. Wow. So, so it's like, it, I mean, I just wanted to and, just and, have that taste of that fish in my oh, mouth. Oh, well, that's so good. Yeah, no. So I went to a restaurant with my fiance um, in, uh, in Monterey and we ordered a dessert and it was one of the first times we'd ever really gone out to a nice dinner. And so I have a thing where I don't like to share desserts because <laughs> this is this why. Is the good stuff, stay away from it, order your own. This, this is the thing. People are like, oh, can it not just have a bite? No, and then they won't. They won't. No. Like, they won't. She's like, oh, I'll just have a bite. And then she takes like a gigantic thing. Okay. So I'm there with my fiance. It was our, one of our first really nice dinners. And um, the dessert comes in. It was an ice cream and like some concoction. I don't know. It was a fancy dessert at a fancy place. And so we were both being very polite about it and then like just kept politely like eating it and he get to the point where we got to like the, the middle of it and our spirit was <laughs> fighting and it was like oh you know I really think I love you but also don't I eat would love dessert. you more if yeah. you your hands up my chocolate yes yes so anyway so like probably everybody else in most of the civilized world yeah we had not planned to do this, but then she saw the Barbie movie and I said, did. I think we need an episode. I'm like, you think we need an episode out of it? Okay. You know. And then I went and saw it and I went, oh my gosh. Yes. 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 So we just went and saw it again today. Yeah. And like the did. old nerds that we are, she had her phone. I had my book. We, we sat there during the movie we and notes. took notes. Yes. <laughs> so took notes. all for you. Mm -hmm. I would not have sat there taking notes, but it wasn't for you. So. Just so we're clear, we are going to talk about the Barbie movie, and which means we are going to give spoilers on spoilers on spoilers on spoilers, <laughs> right? But it's not a murder mystery, so <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not. Some things that are kind of funny that yeah. were unexpected. So anyway, either you are watching this and you don't care and you're not going to go see the Barbie movie and you're going to listen to what we have to say on it, or you've seen the Barbie movie, right? If so anyway. if you've seen it, you're on board with this. If you haven't seen it and you if don't you have to see it, press pause right now. Yeah. And come back to us after you've seen it. Or no, go watch what? another podcast. One of our, not another oh. podcast, but like <laughs> one of our other episodes. We have other yeah. episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can listen to another Just one. Just go listen to another there. episode. There yeah. you go. And then come back to this one mm -hmm. after you've seen the movie. If or you if you want. Or until you get tired of waiting for not having spoilers. So yeah. <laughs> At some point, it's all going to be spoiled anyway. Probably. So, okay. Let's start with this. Before you saw it, A, how much press did you see for it? And B, were you like excited to see it? Or like, where were you on that spectrum? Okay. So first of all, we haven't actually talked too much about intentionally yeah this about so what we saw yeah like what we saw so I mean for all I know she gave a thought it was like some sexist horrible journey or whatever so I all I knew about it was first of all Greta Gerwig I love mm -hmm. um who's done Little Women and she did Lady Birch from this area oh when did you know mm -hmm. yeah like outside of, they filmed a lot of Lady Bird in Sacramento I did know that yeah so anyway so we'll kind of have a thing mm -hmm. and she's not the typical, like, this is kids' toys movie director. Mm -hmm. And so I saw, like, the stills probably a year ago uh, with um, Margot Robbie mm -hmm. and Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. And I thought, could they have picked a better? <laughs> perfect casting. Perfect, yeah. And I thought, first of all, it doesn't seem like something Greta Gerwig would do. And it doesn't seem like something these two would do. It's some, you know, like, they're Academy Award winning actors so it's not those are not the kind of people that do like just the barbie movie. jokey barbie movies so i was intrigued by that i thought it was rated r and mm -hmm. maybe at that time they were talking about having it be rated r i don't know but um it turned out to be rated pg-13 which mm -hmm. is financially a much better decision <laughs> um so i had seen that but i hadn't seen anything I don't like spoilers, so mm -hmm. I intentionally will stay away from things that I as much as you can. So, so yeah, I know you can't get away from this. Oh story. my gosh, no! That well, that was the thing. I wanted to see it right when it came out. Mm -hmm. Her daughter last week 
was just last week, mm -hmm. said she was going to go and dress up mm -hmm. and take my granddaughters. your granddaughters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the heck? Like, how bonkers is that? That's kind of what I thought. Sorry, Em, wherever you are. <laughs> uh, not, not totally bonkers, but I was like, oh. You're a grown woman. Yeah. yeah. And, and so then, I don't you know what, I went to go buy the tickets and I saw, saw, so the very, we had the very first day and we went at 10 in the morning because we were both awake and mm -hmm. we just decided to go. And yeah, I dressed up. Like full her on. Her mom. The Lee is yeah. her mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my 90 year old mom dressed up like Barbie. It was hilarious. So yeah, and we got pictures and stuff. And so. So yeah, you were you hadn't heard much about it intentionally. Yeah, and you were excited to see it. Yes, I was excited to see it. I hadn't heard much about it. I hadn't sought it out at all. You can't mm -hmm. get away from it. So I had heard some. And I was yeah. kind of like, okay, whatever, Barbie movie, okay. Um, now I played with Barbies when I was little, so you know, been a Barbie fan. But it was uh, the movie didn't seem very intriguing to me. And mm -hmm. it, honestly, when there's so much press about yeah. a movie, normally it makes me want to go, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, you're trying a little too hard. Yeah. Um, and so oftentimes to me, that's a sign that the movie is not really going to be as good as they're saying it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just like, yeah, oh, wait, I, I didn't plan on seeing it in theaters. I was just going to go, you know, when it, watch it when it came to Prime yeah. or Netflix or wherever it lands after it's out of the theaters. Um, but then she and her mom saw it and she texted and said, you know, I think we could do an episode. And so it's like, okay, well, um, we were getting ready to go to Monterey. And so it's like, well, it's either tonight or not until we record again. So I said to my daughter, I'm buying two tickets. If Victoria's available, I'll go with her. If not, you want to go. So my daughter and I went and saw it. And um, it's fun. My very meh, attitude about it completely changed. Yeah. Completely. Uh, it's fun. Yeah, it was not just fun. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, I was literally laughing out loud. And can I just say, I swear, Greta and her, like everybody on that team, it feels like they have been playing Barbies from the time they were little up until they made that movie because there were so many things about playing Barbie that yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh, I remember that. I hadn't thought about that in mm -hmm. years. It felt so real to mm -hmm. the experience of playing Barbies. And it also felt very um, fresh. It wasn't like, you know, some nostalgic things feel like, oh, that's just really nostalgic. But it felt really fresh mm -hmm. as far as, I mean, it legit felt like they were still playing Barbies and they had yeah. been all the way. Yeah. And all of them. The grow. thing is that all the actors look like they were having a ball. They look like they were having the time of their lives. Yeah. I mean, the sets were incredible. I mean, it's just everything. Yeah. The colors, the, everything. Yeah. Yeah, they nailed it. They so nailed the creation of the world of Barbie. Mm -hmm. um, nailed that on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, but also the feeling of it. Yeah. <laughs> like at the end when the kids are going to war and they're going to fight with tennis rackets and volleyballs. Yeah. I about died. It's like, oh my gosh, yes, I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, the kind of Barbie and Ken rolled up, and they don't have, and, and they didn't have GI Joes. Joes. They didn't have GI Joes to fight with. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of things that, yeah, they, they, you know, yeah. I love that. First of all, that it started out with like um, Space Odyssey, <laughs> you know, with the music just, and yeah, the whole, yeah. like, it's the whole Space Odyssey. Yeah. And it, you, you're like, okay, well, wait a minute, we're entering a new world yeah we haven't seen like the world building of it was it was very good. I will say though there's one thing that bothered me about the opening of the movie and I have a friend who was very um she and her daughters have very strong opinions about the importance of motherhood and so do I mm -hmm. um but I felt like okay here's your very first big spoiler alert as far as yeah. this is exactly how the scene went it opens up with a girls playing with dolls but they're only you know really the dolls that are available were baby dolls yeah and then until this have this you know barbie which is like the size of the obelisk on mm -hmm. space odyssey yeah and um like she comes into the world and yeah, then my these, notes. these girls all start you know they're throwing the babies out they're breaking the dishes with the babies and first of all the violence of it is like this is disturbing to see them doing this with babies but I get the point that they're making here as yeah. far as that's like the recreation of the space obviously scene. Mm -hmm. But what bothered me about that scene is that in that scene, there is not one single girl who, who still holds on to the baby doll and goes, oh, this is okay. It's like, and every girl broke away from yeah. this. And it's like, no, 
No, every, every no, girl we all have little. And, well, I mean, I think like I am hundred percent sure that I played big girls when I was little. Yeah, I have zero memory of it. What I remember. And I remember hours and hours of this. I can give you specific memories about spreading the blanket out in the front yard mm -hmm. and playing Barbies with my sister. Oh, wow. And the two boys next door and next door to that, mm -hmm. they would come play with us and they'd be the G.I. Joes. And uh -huh. it, I'm so many, and I have very vivid memories that I've seen wow. memories of playing with baby dolls. Oh. My daughter, um, being her mother, I know exactly how many baby dolls she has had. She's had two. Hmm. And she never played with them. Did she play with Barbies? She, when she was two, her cousin gave her a, gave her the first Barbie because she, what her cousin is like five years older than she is, uh -huh. five or six years older than she is. And she wanted to be the one to introduce her to Barbies. And so she bought her, mm -hmm. her, you know, her mom brought her Barbie and, mm -hmm. and brought her over. And that's been it. She has, she played She's and played with Barbies. Like she huh. never played with baby dolls. Um, and so I get that. I was not one who was like, oh, my baby dolls. But I have, I know other friends who, my, one of my daughter's very best friends, I've known her all of her life. And from the time I think she could talk, she could not wait to be a mom. Mm -hmm. Could not wait to be a mom. Yeah. And she's a mom now and her world is her children. Mm -hmm. And so while that's not me, mm -hmm. I respect very much that there are women that are like that. And that was not represented at all in that opening scene. It wasn't. I think that that's interesting. First of all, when I saw that again, I remembered, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm shocked Tracy just didn't get up and walk out. <laughs> and that scene, because, it, you know, it does feel like a a destroying of a certain kind of world yeah, yeah. that was created yeah. but I thought that was interesting and I didn't connect it till now but when they tell Barbie do you want to begin this is another spoiler we can't just keep we're going to be spoiling so yeah um when they tell Barbie uh, I'm going to be do you want to be human and this is what it means to be human and then she holds her hand and she has all these flashes it the first time I saw it all I saw were children mm. and I thought Oh, it's all because I don't have kids. And I actually did from the moment I was a little child, wanted to have babies. I wanted to be a mom. People would say, what do you want to be? My dad was a pilot. So they were like, hey, do you want to be a stewardess? Because obviously I couldn't be a pilot. But anyway, yeah, huh? you want to be a steward? And I'd say, no, I want to be a mom. And so I usually don't get like, like I don't get caught up in paying attention for those things. But in that scene where they're like, this is what it means to be human. There were so there were many children, mothers and, and, and daughters and children and babies and mm -hmm. things. So I think that's interesting, though, that they destroyed the world, that world, uh -huh. and then came back, came to, back to it again and said, but this, mm -hmm. this like what's happening here is we're going to destroy this and we're going to create a plastic world of perfectness <laughs> and then when they she left it they're like oh well here it's a touchstone kind of oh yeah here you go so yeah that did redeem it but it still was very yeah no i just did, i didn't like that in the beginning i mean mm -hmm. it's like okay have have most of the girls go let's yeah get in this world and let us make other choices mm -hmm. that that there wasn't one who yeah. went i'm i'm good to the baby doll yeah thank you you <laughs> know yeah there wasn't even one no yeah because in the ending scene where they kind of went back around full mm -hmm. circle there were many other relationships yeah. besides the mother-child relationship and well I'm just gonna like skip around here but I think it was interesting choice to have so Barbie is I mean you've seen it but I'll just say Barbie her world in her like Barbie land world is falling apart and they take her to a different Barbie and different Barbie says weird Barbie This sounds a weird Barbie this sounds like it's a crazy movie but it is it is, it is it's so fun funny, but it's it makes, fun and fun and, and when I love great points I will get back to the okay. Barbie. one of the things my favorite things about this movie is that it has such great social commentary without feeling really heavy-handed yeah and I'm very sensitive of that because yeah movies heavy-handed I'm like get yeah. out of here just well, that's because, yeah, that's what I was wondering, because I was wondering, like, when I got finished with it, if you were going to be like, oh, that was too heavy handed. No, I, it because it was funny and it was so, mm -hmm. it just, it felt playful for yeah. those of us who are old enough. I mean, kid, girls still play with Barbie, kids still play mm -hmm. with Barbies. Yeah. Um, but it was, so it was still playful in that mm -hmm. way, but it just made such really great. I didn't feel like it was swayed too much one way or the other. Yeah. We'll talk more about that. 
and it just made such great points without being like, and now you will listen to our agenda. Yeah. And you will agree or you are slime. Mm-hmm. It was slime. Yeah. It didn't feel like that. That's good. Sorry about that. I but anyway, you were talking about going okay, to your- So, yeah. So Barbie's world is falling apart because, and she goes, we are Barbie and we are Barbie reads the signs and the signs are, look, you've got the person who's playing with you is sad or upset or lonely. And now you have to save her basically. And so she goes and she thinks it's the kid who's playing with her. Mm-hmm. She finds the kid and the kid's like, get out, you know, peace out. And it turns out it was her mom that was playing with her. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was an interesting choice that they didn't have to have because yeah. what I thought when they saw, found the daughter and the daughter's like fascist, Barbie fascist. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, well then they're going to have a secret moment where the girl's like, yeah, secretly I'm playing with these dolls and I'm sad, but I couldn't be like that in front of my friends or whatever, yeah. but that wasn't it. It was yeah. really the mom and the connection was missing between the two of them. And somehow this sounds crazy to say like Barbie brought them together, but, but I, I was just shared it was, yeah. When, they were, when the little girl, when the girl was little, she's mm-hmm. in high school now in the movie. But when she was little, they would play together. It was just the, the bond that mom and the daughter had. That was one of the things that they did. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was, I mean, that's the core relationship that was broken, mm-hmm. that was fixed, you know, by they That was one. And this was one of the things like, never <laughs> did I ever imagine I would be saying this sentence in my life. Hey, I better not do I better not speak. I mean, they're not have water in my mouth. <laughs> It's one of the things I liked about the Barbie movies, how multidimensional it was. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> like that was one of the relationships yeah. that was repaired. But mm-hmm. then also Barbie's relationship with herself and the and her world, and mm-hmm. then also Ken and yeah. his relationship with himself and his world. And it was, I mean, it just on so many levels. Yeah. It it just hit so many of the right notes. Yeah. Because it did. I one of the things, honestly, going into this, I thought, okay, it's either gonna be um just a dumb movie that's a dumb comedy that usually I'm not a big fan of dumb comedy yeah so I, I had I need I, exactly the right movie yeah. for it and that movie doesn't hit I felt often. very strongly um, there was not going to be that based on what you had seen before or based on who the casting because okay. it just yeah it just um, didn't seem like somebody who's going to do a dumb movie so I thought okay and I'm not going to like if, so I wouldn't like it if it was that um, or it's going to be so one-sided. Okay, mm-hmm. Barbie is horrible. She's awful because of the body image issues mm-hmm. and the expectations of women on women because of her. And I mm-hmm. thought it was going to be really heavy-handed that way. And it's just, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It's yeah. I felt well, like there was just this amazing balance because you know, there's. I am not anti-feminist. I am not. Um, She's not feminist like me. <laughs> I'm feminist in a different way. Yes, she's feminist in a different way. Um, I am but, feminist in a usual way. To me, burn my there, bra. There are, um, you know, Post the term signs. toxic masculinity. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. There is toxic masculinity, but I also know there is toxic femininity, and that's not a term that we hear. I also know that there is non-toxic masculinity, and that's not talked about much. And so I felt like it was going to go like really hard yeah. down one road, mm-hmm. and it doesn't. It doesn't. It just hits a lot of notes. It's it's mm-hmm. it's complicated, and I yes, like that. It is complicated. The Barbie the Barbie movie is complicated, kids. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that Barbie, I love, gee, we just can't figure it all out. Yeah, because it's so mm-hmm. complicated. Well, I thought so. I had they brought they brought up some Barbie that I had that like no one I'd ever played with had and I never no one had ever heard of it. It's called Grow Up Skipper. Oh yeah, did you have? I it? I don't think I had that, but yeah. I remember it. It's arm and it's the torso extended and the boobs popped out, and then Skipper was grown up. Here's how you go through puberty. Yeah. I don't have any idea <laughs> what, they, what they were smoking when they created that. But trying to send a message about growing up. I guess so. I guess and so. You no, know, our bodies change as we well, grow up. It's I a conversation the, everybody has to have. The other interesting thing I thought, and I think the reason why maybe the world worked, the Barbie world worked as mm-hmm. it did is, so my sister is 16 years older than I am. And so she has... Um, the original Barbie and all the clothes and Midge and Ken 
And so they were very special. And they saved them. She saved them for me. Denise did. My sister Denise saved them for me. And when I got old enough that my mom thought I wasn't going to ruin these, like very special. Turn them into weird Barbies. Barbies. <laughs> yeah, turn them into weird Barbie. Like then I could play with them. And so they really were like special. And I treated them like that. And the clothes were beautifully made. And yeah. just like the satin, the dresses and, and like everything. I, half my fashion like comes from like that 60s era of you know pencil skirts and all of that kind of stuff so it was really fun um to see that and then of course I had Barbies from my own generation and so it was really I think part of the reason why it the world worked in a an emotional level is that I saw those Barbies from all those different times like mm -hmm. and they said at some point where well, Barbie is just meant to be forever it's an idea ideas yeah. are meant to go forever you mm -hmm. know and so I think that that too made it um that connection of like the generations playing with these dolls mm -hmm. like the generations of of you know yeah of girls who grew up to be women who didn't end up being all the different we didn't save the world Barbie didn't save the world she didn't mm -mm. And that's what I, that's one thing that I love about early in the opening. They're, they're explaining how Barbie just changed everything and she's a yeah. pilot and she's the president and she's yeah. a doctor and she's a this and she's a Barbie. Yeah. And they have like all and the so, Barbies yes. in the world living there, like the president, yeah, and yes. a Nobel Prize winner. And, yeah. and, 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 and because of Barbie, all of, how long did I think I wrote it down? Um, all of the women's rights issues, all the women's rights issues were solved. Yeah, because of Barbie. Yeah, because that was, that's, 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 the that's what they believe in. Yeah, in Barbie Land, yeah, that's what they that believe. The, 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 all the women's rights issues were mm -hmm. were solved by Barbie. And so when she gets to the real world, world and finds out that this girl hates her mm -hmm. and they're not going to give her a hug and she's not the favorite person, don't ever. Yeah, um, it's a shock to her. <laughs> and I think, I mean, and these are all the you know the social commentary the under that that for so long we've thought that if you know just give them yes. more power and if, yeah. if the women are the ones in power then everything's going to be good and because we're going to balance mm -hmm. out this this patriarchy that we're taking down and this toxic masculinity mm -hmm. and women are going to take things over and it's all going to be all good mm -hmm. and that but it's like wait a minute it's more complicated than yes that. it is it's more complicated than that yeah oh i thought the other thing is oh gosh now like there's eight million different things let me find <laughs> sorry um yeah so let's talk about though the impossible standards of barbie oh gosh and first of all Mar they did have a nod helen mirren does the narrating yes uh -huh. helen mirren yeah dame helen mirren yeah. did the narrating for the barbie movie so anyway helen mirren uh did acknowledge that you know because barbie is margot robbie who is as barbie as you, you get possibly yeah. get she just looked like a human barbie yeah and she at some point has a breakdown she's like oh i you know i'm ugly i'm this i'm, I'm not that. i'm not pretty yeah. anymore yeah yeah and so helen mirren did like put a nod of like okay yeah. margot robbie's the wrong person here and yeah. we want to believe note, that this barbie's not pretty note to studio executives yeah. the casting choice of margot robbie mm -hmm. is not the choice to make if yeah. just when you're trying to make this point yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i loved that mm -hmm. i loved that yeah so anyway, I'm trying um, to... another thing that i loved is when <laughs> when they're kind of introducing the barbies and you're seeing the all the barbies in their different roles the lawyer barbie <laughs> she gives us a drop dead argument about whatever she's arguing and, she, and she's like and I feel very strongly about this and I can have logic I can hold logic and emotion yes. at the same time and they all cheer they're like yay the one like, thing oh yeah yes you don't have to and I feel like that was that's one of the um downsides to what the way a lot of either women going into the work world I feel mm -hmm. like because the work world was a man's world for so yeah. long that if a woman wanted to progress in that world, she had to Kinda suppress her femininity yes. and enhance her masculine side yes. and take those traits. And then, um, and also feminism on the other side, it's like, instead of going, this is, you know, th this, this classic femininity is not working. It's not what we want. And so we're throwing that off. 
and becoming more, um, Except. leaning more into the masculine side of themselves, which is good. We all yeah. have both sides. Very strong about that. But um, so to hear her lawyer mm-hmm. Barbie acknowledging that yeah. we can have, we're not ruled by feelings, but we don't have to throw feelings mm-hmm. out the door to, in order to embrace yeah. being logical. And the and other thing those. is, yeah, they had the like very little various ceremonies that Barbie's had and they gave, I think it was a journalist award mm-hmm. to one of the, to the girls. And she was like, you know, I deserve this. Yeah. I worked hard. I deserve this. Yeah. And like the way she said it was so much as if you would, as if a Barbie would say it, but, yeah. but it said like a Barbie would say, it, but also without any, we talked about apologizing last week. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, there were so many moments where I noticed the Barbie said things without apologizing. There wasn't even a note of, I should be sorry for saying this. I, I shouldn't yeah. say, I'm, I, like, you can't get an award and say, I deserve this. Or, you know, somebody was something or, you know, like, I'm pretty or I'm the yeah. like, there was no apology right. for being who they were. And that's one of the things in, um, for me, one of the big, big moments of the movie is um, America Ferrera. Her her character is human, yeah, and she's the one who was playing with the doll who created this portal between the world, blah blah blah. Um, so she ends up in Barbie Land, and mm-hmm. she gives this speech that is just like, "I want to memorize this speech. Yes. I want a copy of this script so that yes. I can memorize this speech because to me, this speech is just like everything." And that's one thing she says in there. It's like if she goes off, yeah, on um, you know how impossible. It is to be a woman mm-hmm. in, in in with the standards that are expected. Yeah, and how you have to uh, you know you, you have to be want to be thin, but you can't say you want to be thin. You have mm-hmm. to say that you want to be healthy, and mm-hmm. but then you have but you have to be healthy. I mean, or you say you want to be healthy, but you also have to be thin. Yeah, you have to yeah. be thin, mm-hmm. and so just that kind of thing. And one of the things that she says multiple times in mm-hmm. that in that monologue is um, and grateful. Yeah. And you have to be grateful. Mm-hmm. And so that mm-hmm. whole, um, that Barbie standing up at the beginning and saying, you know, yes, thank you for this surprise. I've worked so hard. I deserve this. Mm-hmm. You know, you deserve, yes, I do deserve this. Mm-hmm. Um, go so contrary, but you know, you have to be great. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. It's always so nice of you to bestow this upon me. And there is that too, because you know, it's nice, you know, people who win Academy Awards are very, mm-hmm. you know, great yeah. people, whatever. Yeah. But also there there's that balance of gratitude mm-hmm. but also understanding that i have worked for this and there's no shame in that yeah and it was, recognizing what i worked it for. was so funny to see that and you know greta gerwig captured that perfectly that mm-hmm. that um there was no apology for being who they were mm-hmm. and we say that all the time like you know just be who you are and you know without apologies without this whatever but there was no like not a hint of cynicism or mm-hmm. i mean there was some satire sure <laughs> yeah. but like the whole thing is satirical i did see a bunch of um reviewers who were very upset about the america ferrera speech and that you know the, and they were mostly all men there were some women but mostly were all men that were like you know da, 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 we, men haters you know they just want to abolish all men blah 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 and i'm like it, every single thing she says is true you just have never heard it like that all squished together oh, yeah. we, we like were concentrate. <laughs> yeah like there were quotes she said that i like i've heard from you come from you like almost exact word for word so you, the ones who were the people who were talking about, it, I thought, well, first of all, this movie's not for you. You were probably the boy that told your sister, eh, I'm not going to play with Barbies. Barbies are for girls. And now they come back and like, hey, there's a movie and it's for girls and we hate it. OK, yeah. go, boy, go yeah. play with G.I. Joe. But at the same time, another thing I loved about the movie was it it wasn't a movie about it's just so hard to be. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It wasn't that at all. No, it was like, yeah this stuff this is crazy and it's this mm-hmm. we need no let's just be done with this yeah but at the same time it didn't take that and blame it all on the kens mm-hmm. it didn't blame it it's just like no no just no yeah and at the same time it acknowledged that um and this is one of the things i love about it. it's like in barbie land yeah and tell me if this was not if you're a girl that played with barbies tell me if this is not how it was for you when I played Barbies, mm-hmm. Ken, you know, the whole thing is like, 
Ken is supposed to be Barbie's boyfriend, but it's very clear in the oh. movie that Barbie is Ken's her friend. And when I was playing Barbies, mm -hmm. it was it was just like that. It was like, yeah, have Ken around, have Ken around. Mm -hmm. But whenever I had a a boyfriend or a mm -hmm. husband for Barbie when I was playing, it was GI Joe. <laughs> Ken? That would have been hilarious. So I mean, it would have been good. Yeah. completely undermined the whole movie. But that would have been hilarious. G.I. Joe shows up. But, but then it acknowledges it says, you know, I'm trying to remember the exact wording. Um, something like that. You know, Ken basically only exists in oh, yeah. to be acknowledged by Barbie. It, it. I mean, I don't know. If you've done, you've heard a lot about the male gaze. Oh yes. our, yeah. So they like they actually used that phrase. You know, I. I you know barbie's gaze i'm only yeah, yeah. seeing under barbie's gaze or when barbie looks yeah. at me i mean they they were really you know yeah and so it wasn't just like it's so hard to be a woman mm -hmm. it is it is and the expectations are let us be done with those please yeah we can't be done with that fast enough yeah but recognizing at the same time that it's about women really just trying to find their place and where it is is not under the thumb of male dominance where yeah. it has been for too long yeah um but then where is it but and when that happens that also leaves the kens yeah wondering where they are what what is I mean, what does it mean they, yeah i mean one of these ken adult. says when ken when the kens take over barbie land and then it's, that's falling apart. And he's like, it's hard making those decisions all the time. <laughs> and, and this was, it's like, it, you laugh. It's yeah, funny because no, it's, it's a funny scene, but it's so, so true. Good. There's just so, you know, acknowledging that um, it's complicated. Yeah. And that's where I love it. That's where it wraps up. Mm -hmm. That's where it ends up eventually. Is yeah. That it is complicated to be human. Yeah. And I love that we get that from i know i know <laughs> i think so and we um, should wrap up um okay then favorite things there i mean there's so many things i loved about this movie but i loved so so loved at the end where the creator of barbie um, oh yeah her and barbie are having a moment because barbie's deciding if she wants to become human and she's and uh they're so they're having a conversation about that and the creator of barbie is she says you know, she's talking to Barbie about you're an idea. You are meant to be. You are meant to be forever. Mm -hmm. You're an idea. Plus, you're made of plastic. And <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and that last, you know, an idea lasts forever. And she's talking about how complicated it is to be human. And she says, you know, that's the patriarchy, and because that's what Ken tries to introduce into Barbie. Then, um, the patriarchy. And Barbie, they're just ideas yeah. that we have come up with to try to deal with how mm -hmm. complicated it is to be human. Mm -hmm. And it's like, thank you. Yeah. The patriarchy is not evil. Barbie mm -hmm. is not evil. Yeah. The patriarchy is not perfection. And Barbie is not perfection. Mm -hmm. They're ideas yeah. that we have come up with to try to figure out this mess that's called life, mm -hmm. that's complicated. Yeah. And we don't know what we're doing. No. Nobody ever has. And we no. just go, all go through here and mm -hmm. try to figure things out as we go along. And yeah. that's been the story of every person who's ever lived, except for, you know, the way I look at it, maybe Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Dude knew what was going on. He, I, he had yes. it. Yeah. He had it down. <laughs> um, I guess, like, my favorite part, I think, of all of it, I think the relationship between the mothers and the, like, the generational mm -hmm you know, relationships that you could see, you know, the, the creator coming back mm -hmm. and, you know, but I think that there was a line that America Ferreira said, said that everyone is a little weird, dark and crazy here. And those were the heroes, like, yeah. you know, weird Barbie was the hero. Barbie was the hero when she became a little weird, dark and crazy. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in America Ferreira and her daughter, of course. Well, and and that, where that, that's what I love. Where that like, moment came about is that her daughter is the one who her, you know, it's a mother teen and this mm -hmm. the relationship with the daughter's like, mm -hmm. and they used to be close. And so now it's a tough relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was the daughter who went to Barbie land with her mom, mm -hmm. um, who said, you know, if, 
is you, when you, you know, you're, you're trying to fight against your being weird, dark and crazy when that's mm-hmm. what you are. And that's like the best part of you. Mm-hmm. And it was a daughter pointing out that that was like why she was part of the reason she's so irritated with her mom, why that relationship was so strained is because her mother, she saw her mother not being her whole self. Yeah. And when her mother owned that, mm-hmm. she said, she, I am weird and I am dark and I am crazy. When her mother owned that mm-hmm. and just went, oh, okay. yeah, then that was the, a big turn mm-hmm. in the healing of that relationship mm-hmm. is when the mother owned who she was. Yeah. And I think that's really true, not just in um, parent and child relationships, mm-hmm. but in friendships, mm-hmm. in romantic relationships, in all kinds of relationships, because really, honestly, if the person that you're in relationship with is not wanting all of you, yeah, it's, you know, uh, there are various levels of relationships. And if it's a, if it's a kind of distant friend or that you're mm-hmm. not around all the time, that's okay. Mm-hmm. If there are people who just like a certain side of you and that um, helps them in some way, then okay. Mm-hmm. But for people who are really important to you, if relationships are real important to you, if they don't want your whole self, then yeah. maybe it's time to question yeah that relationship Mm -hmm. if they don't want the whole you then yeah yeah and I thought that 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 was great at the beginning we we were presented with this perfect world where you know you're dressed for everything and the end by the end it's not that that world still existed then but it's the just you know it's the imperfections Mm -hmm. that Barbie herself was seeking Mm -hmm. you know as she steps off the... yeah oh initially that she was fighting so hard against mm-hmm. yeah 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 did having flat feet and cellulite mm-hmm. no. whatever oh my it takes gosh. to know cell- that the cellulite is the thing that like drove her to like leave and yeah. go try and fix the world risk and everything. Yeah, fix everything so she didn't have to have cellulite yeah uh, which i thought was hilarious I know. That's and that's a beautiful yeah point and oh, this anyway. is this is why this is it's such a great movie for us to be talking about here. <laughs> well, well done. Me. Well done. I know. I know. Cheers all of you guys. The, cheers yes, to, Barbie to the Barbie movie. people. And well done to all the people. Greta Gerwig yeah. represented our region strong there. Yeah. So until next time, yes. be sure to nourish your body and your soul so that you can be your whole entire self. Oh, there you go. All all right. Right. One Get more. the flip at the end. Okay, so this is embarrassing because I always made fun of people who did this, but like and subscribe. <laughs> Turns out it's important. Well, it's only it's it's only it's important because if you like what you're listening to and seeing and you want to find it again, it makes it easier for you to find it. And then also it makes it easier for other people to find it. Mm-hmm. So if you like us, like 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 us yeah like and yeah like put a ring on it like yes. us yeah then like and subscribe and it'll make us easier to find hey it's tracy if this was helpful and you'd like more follow me on instagram at tlastel.nourishingbodyandsoul or on facebook or youtube at nourishing body and soul or you can find my website at nourishingbodysoul.com Thanks for tuning in to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Before we wrap up, we just want to remind you that the information we share in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended for medical advice. While we hope you find our discussions helpful, we strongly recommend that you seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider before making any changes to your diet, exercise routine, or any other aspect of your health. We also want to make it clear that the host, guests, and producers of this podcast are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences that may result from the use of any information or suggestion discussed in this podcast. We care about your well-being, but we can't take responsibility for individual outcomes. By listening to this podcast, you agree to indemnify and hold harmless the host, guests, and producers of this podcast from and against any and all claims, damages, liabilities, costs, and expenses arising from your use of the information provided in this podcast. We're so grateful for your support and we hope you keep listening and learning with us. Thanks.